what's up welcome back to my channel today's video i'm finally playing with makeup again and testing out some new products it's gonna be really fun because not only am i testing out new products on my face i'm also going to be showing you guys like an everyday look i've been doing while using those new products the new things we're going to be testing today is the Too faced born this way uh, matte foundation that's new it's kind of the new rave right now some people love it some people hate it but i really wanted to test it out because i do have a trip coming up i'll talk about that in this video and i wanted a good long lasting 24 coverage foundation video it's not sponsored obviously i wish it was this is like the ultimately the daily glam look i've been doing so it's not like glam glam like no fake lashes we do try out try out some new bomb mascara so i just wanted to kind of get ready with you guys show you guys some new products some techniques I've been using that I've learned from TikTok and ultimately just try out some new stuff. So if you like this video, if you want to see more like this, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, but let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, y'all, I'm so excited because it has been forever since I've done a video like testing new makeup products and really just doing a tutorial of what I've been doing. So I'm really excited because the foundation we're going to be using today is a new foundation. It's the Born This Way Matte Foundation from Too Faced. So if you guys know, I've been through about three bottles of the original Born This Way foundation and after I ran out of my last bottle, um, I decided to change things up, try different brands, but this has ultimately, like the original one, has been one of my favorites for a long time just because it's kind of like medium to full coverage and it just looks so smooth on the skin. I actually watched a video from like this time last summer. Um, it like popped up on my memories on Instagram of a look I did or maybe Snapchat and then I went and looked and I was like, my skin looked so smooth. What was I using? And it was the Born This Way foundation. So I decided to try this one. I'm going to Disney World next week with my mom and you know Disney World's in Orlando it's super hot humid and I wanted something that would last all day so I was talking to the Ulta associate and he was like this is what I'm wearing you'll love it we have the same skin tone this is in the shade snow and I actually it's funny I have the concealer in the shade snow um, because I got the concealer to be lighter on my skin um, like a year ago and now I am officially that light, so my concealer like matches my skin, so we'll see if that works. But um, because I bought this, I got a little uh, like sample pack of samples from Too Faced, and one of the things in there was the Hangover RX Primer from Too Faced, um, and it was just a little tiny sample, and so that's the primer we're going to use today. A ton of people talk about it. Okay, so it's like a white, creamy primer. Y'all know I love my Smashbox. Um, photo finish primer that's like my go-to I can feel it it's like kind of wet and I'm I guess I'm used to more of a gel primer um, but it feels good take a little bit and put it on my hand also I'm sorry if it's kind of dark behind me um, I'm looking in the camera and it just looks like it's kind of dark okay so this is like a half of a pump on uh, that I put on my hand um, Okay, that went like a little bit a long way. And one thing the guy in the store did say was you kind of have to work fast because it dries down fast. And I was like, okay, so this is just like half a pump. Um, you can see it's a little bit heavier in the spot I first went in, but I'm going to also apply a little bit more coverage down here. And I'm going to kind of wear this throughout the day. And if I remember, I will check up with you guys at the end of the day to give you an update on what my makeup looks like. I used to only wear matte foundations because I have oily skin and I thought that you had to wear matte foundations, but even though I loved the way dewy foundations looked, but in fall season, I think fall is so pretty for just like an overall matte eye, matte lip, matte face look. I think it's so pretty. Okay, I'm going to do another pump and we're just going to apply this over here. So I finished blending all of that out. I think the color is, it definitely matches my skin. And I think my problem is I always go a shade or two darker than normal. And I do plan on putting on fake tan before my trip next week. But at the same time, I feel like once I have bronzer and blush and everything, I won't look like a ghost because that is currently what I look like. I have been so pasty lately. Literally, this is called snow. So we're going to see if this, um, concealer <laughs> is the same color um oh that's like a little bit more yellow and i'm not yellow okay i'm just gonna put this here to make it even but then we're not gonna use this i don't think i feel like this has maybe it's because it's older it's got a little bit more yellow but if you can tell it has definitely it's darker than the foundation i think so for concealer i'm gonna use uh tarte shape tape in fair beige 
um, just because it is a little bit lighter. And I'm going to use that e.l.f. Uh, concealer sponge that I love so much. Honestly, I feel like that might have just as much coverage as the foundation did, um, or more. Okay, so now before we even set or move on to anything else, I always have been like setting my face with setting spray. This is by Morphe. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that dry a second. And then you guys know I've been using this Chanel cream bronzer. It was $50 from the Chanel website. If you're gonna buy this, highly recommend buying it from Chanel website versus like Sephora or Nordstrom or something because it comes in the fancy Chanel box and I use that as decor. And so I just take a little bit of this to contour and I use this buffing foundation brush from e.l.f. Honestly, I want another one of these brushes for actual foundation. And so I'm just gonna take a little bit on um, right under my cheekbones and kind of stiffle it up. Is that the word stiffle? Okay, I don't know if it's because I have on a cream bronzer on top of a matte foundation. I don't feel like it's blending well. Um, I'm gonna try a little bit on the sides of my nose, but I also have a bronzer. Okay, so I feel like that cream bronzer didn't really go well with the matte foundation. So we're gonna actually stop what we're doing. I feel like that would go more with dewy foundation or either just like a BB cream is what I normally use it with. And I don't wanna mess up this foundation. So we're gonna stop what we're doing and go into an actual new bronzer that we're gonna be testing today. It was also in that little sample kit. It is a medium deep matte brown, br matte brown bronzer, Chocolate Soleil from Too Faced. So they just gave me this little sample size. Um, so I hope this isn't too dark. That smells so good. Um, I opened the package the other day and I was like, what does that smell? And then I remembered that Too Faced actually makes their stuff smell like chocolate or whatever their palettes are. I know they have like the peach stuff, which I, I want to smell the peach stuff because I love peaches. Oh, that was a little too much. Gosh, what am I doing? And I'm going to use this little Morphe M173 brush to kind of contour the sides of my nose. This is typically what I use uh, for my cream bronzer, but again, we don't want to start any drama. This time last year, I also really loved the Fenty Beauty Lavender Pro Filter Found uh, Pro Filter Setting Powder, um, and I've kind of been dabbling back into that lately. But since this is more of a matte foundation, I want to go with what I know that works with a lot of different products that I've used for years, and that's the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. It just makes your under eyes and everything look so smooth, and that is why I love it use this elf sponge i've been really good about cleaning my sponges and brushes lately so we're just going to kind of put that under the eye and as we do it we kind of shape the sides of the nose so that way when we sweep off it kind of has like a little shape to it and I'm just going to lightly press that um y'all know i've never really been too much into baking i feel like there's just so many different makeup techniques like baking and setting and all of this stuff and obviously if you don't set yourself with powder it's going to get cakey but as far as like baking i get why like i'd get the science behind it okay i'm just going to take a little bit of that powder on my br on a brush and just set the rest of my face i feel like there might have been some shimmer left on this brush um, but as I do that, I'm going to go ahead and start sweeping the powder off of my under eyes and stuff. Again, this is what I do every day. I always, like, I know some people only set their concealer. I pretty much always just go heavy under my eyes so they don't crease and stuff. But then I go, like, a light hand all over my face to make sure everything's set. I'm going to go ahead and spray our face one more time. Now, normally I do brows off camera and I might do half of them off camera today, but Ulta has their 21 days of beauty sale going on right now and I've been needing a new brow pencil. So they, Sunday, I believe, um, last Sunday from whenever this video is going up, they had their Benefit uh, brow pencil on sale for half off and it was only $12. I used to have the shade 3.75 warm medium brow, brown, <laughs> brown, and then I also got the 3.5 neutral medium brown because I couldn't decide what color I needed and you can't test the products so since I had 3.75 I guess that's what we're gonna go in with today I need to do my brows I love the look of big brows though I wish my hair on my brows would just go grow in the way that I want them to like I get so many hairs out here but never any like right here in like these naked spots they just get bigger on the outsides and I want them to get bigger like up in the center but I'm glad big, like, messy, like, Instagram model brows are in rather than the slayed Instagram model brows, you know? Like, because I've never, if you've been to my channel, I'm not good at brows. It might be slightly dark with the lighting, so I do apologize. 
but the first thing I always do is kind of fill in the gaps of like the main portions and then work my way to the center of the brow by doing just little strokes that's why I like this specific brow pencil um, I also really like Benefit's brow gel and I like Elf's brow gel um, I used all of mine it is just a clear like setting brow gel my big thing I try not to do like solid thick lines I like to do like little short lines and I totally understand that there are billions of people out there that can do brows better than me so feel free to fast forward to seeing the rest of the face but this is pretty much what I do with my brows just because I like them just straight now and right now they're really hairy on the outside so I kind of have to work with that um, and I can't really do like an arched brow so I have to kind of fill it in flat and then kind of arch it up here so that way it can kind of point out if that makes sense um i want to go ahead and get to my eyes because that's like the main point in this video is showing you guys like how i've been doing my eye makeup like every day but we're gonna do the blush real quick to see if that makes me look a little bit more alive um the blush i've been using all summer pretty much is the cali cosmetics blush in rosy it is so pink it's crazy so you, if you're not a big blush person um you might want to get something lighter, but then you also might want to go in with a really light hand. And because of TikTok, I've been working on blush placement. And instead of bringing it down here, I've been working to only use like a little, like a smaller amount and doing it on the upper cheekbones. Um, kind of like right below where you would put my highlight or even where you would put your highlight because you can put your highlight on top. And I really just love this blush. I think it's so pretty. Um, and this is like the lightest amount. Something I've been back into, you guys know I love the Jaclyn Cosmetics, her whole highlight collection. But since that really isn't being sold anymore, um, I kind of wanted to get accustomed to things that I also know and love. And that is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. Um, so I use the first two shades in this, which is Dim Light and uh, Incandescent Light. So we have a pinky tone and a white tone. And I love this look for under the eyes. So I'm just going to take... It kind of depends on whatever you want to use. Sometimes I use a sponge, um, but I'm going to use a brush, and I'm going to go into that middle shade, which is more of the white, and I'm just going to kind of dust that under my eyes, like all the way, because I don't mind this coming down low, because it just makes your whole face look so pretty and glowy. Like, I think any kind of bride would need this on her wedding day, no matter if she's into heavy makeup or not. I think this is just so pretty. And I also will take a little bit of this powder and put it on like down the strip of my nose. Something I noticed that really does, like I know we can talk about primers and setting sprays and all that all day long, but something that I really have been testing out um, that makes my eyeshadow last so much longer is the P. Louise base. It really does work. And if you just want to use like a concealer or whatever, I am such a big fan now. Um, I kind of stopped for the longest time and was just applying my eyeshadow directly to my skin. I know this is probably getting old. This was actually like most of the steps I'm going to do were in like the first video I ever posted on YouTube. But truly, this has been my eyeshadow look for years. Um, and it is using the Jaclyn Hill OG palette. And I know a lot of people have this palette. So I feel like that this may be a good thing. Um, and so what I do, I just use a fluffy brush. Morphe has like these brush packs. Um, I gave one to my mom for Christmas and she didn't want like half of them. So I took it from her and they have, they don't have numbers on them. But what I do, I kind of switch it up just based on what I'm feeling. I'll either go in with a silk cream or MFEO. Um, and I'm going to go in silk cream, which is just like a good transition shade. Speaking of eyeshadow, I am so excited for this new Natasha Denona palette, the Glam palette. Um, I've never had a Natasha Denona palette. I've never really had like this deep desire to get one because they're so expensive. But when I saw that palette, I was like, I want that. It is like cool toned glam and that's what I like. Uh, you'll see, like this might be a little bit warm, um, but you'll see this is kind of a cool toned look. And so many people prefer warm toned things, especially for fall. Not me, not I. And so I just take this in little circular motions and kind of buff it out all in the crease. And this is like our transition base no number one shade. And so you want to make sure it's really blended on the outside edges. And now we're going to go into this shade Central Park. I kind of mix it up also with these bottom colors. Um, I'll also use Soda Pop sometimes. So 
Central Park has been like my number one shade. Also, when I first got this palette, um, I was still all pretty much using uh, eyeshadow for my brows, which you can do that. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but that was pretty much all I was using. And so I used a lot of that shade for my brows. And so I'm just going to kind of stamp this on a little bit on the lash line, kind of working it into the outer crease. Um, and it can look a little messy because we're gonna use a different brush to blend it out This is just to make sure we get like a lot of pigment on it looks bad before it looks good So then I'll kind of just take a brush that has no product on it and I'll kind of blend um, Those two shades together before we even get to the rest of the eye So it just kind of makes it look nice and smooth now We're using a different shade from a different thing. This is a single shade called smoke It is a scattered light glitter eyeshadow from hourglass this stuff is beautiful. Emily Ann Gemma, she is a beautiful beauty blogger um, and fashion blogger, and she talked about this stuff, and I had to get it. I think Emily might have actually had a different color, but I thought this one was so pretty because, again, like I like cool toned. So what I'll do, I'll just take a flat brush, I'll spritz it. Make sure you spritz it since it is like a kind of a scattered pigment. You want to have a little bit more product and kind of lay it down. You can also use your finger if you prefer. And I'll kind of just pat it on without even blending at first and then kind of shape it. I finished doing the same thing on this eye and now it's time for the eyeliner. So you can totally choose not to do eyeliner. I like to do eyeliner because I feel like it makes my lashes look fuller and it kind, kind of brings like every look together. Something I've been doing forever. I saw Jacqueline, Jacqueline, I cannot talk in my videos ever. Um, Jacqueline Hill talked about this in her video. She always puts eyeliner under her lashes, like on the top waterline because it makes your lashes look fuller. I kind of noticed this years ago just on my own because I think in high school, middle school, we all went through that black eyeliner phase. I still use black eyeliner, just not on the outside, you know, like I used to smudge it out everywhere um i've always used this on my top waterline and i some people are really picky about touching their lashes and stuff i like to put this on before i do the rest of my lash stuff um because i don't mind touching my lashes and stuff and i feel like it's just easier to use your finger to lift to make sure you're actually getting under there it just deepens everything even without having mascara or a liner on the top i'm going to be using my kat von d tattoo liner in trooper black I've just been using this forever. Another TikTok hack that I saw was to actually start the liner away from the lash line. I can't remember what they said that did, but I think it just keeps it from um, being like messy in a swoop. Okay, and I'll do that and then I'll just fill it in. And so this kind of gives you more of that like Kylie Jenner liner because it's like not going all the way to the center of the eye. I like a cat look too, but this is more of that like just easy swept out eyeliner. First off, curl your lashes. Um, and so I kind of just get close to the base of the lash and kind of like arch it up without just like leaving it there. Do the L'Oreal Voluminous Primer. I use this all the time. And you guys know I was using the L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. I cannot find it. I took it on a trip with me and I think it might be in my car somewhere or I left it somewhere. I don't know where it is, but that's okay because I have these new mascaras that everyone talks about and so I'm really excited to try. They're from the brand Essence. These have been like raved about on Instagram, uh, TikTok, everything. Thing is, there's like 20 different mascaras to choose from. So I got this, I think it's a new one. It's called What the Fake. It is a volumin voluminizing um, or is it volumizing? <laughs> it's a volumizing and lengthening like, mascara. And then I also got this one, which is a sculpted volume mascara. Okay, so we're gonna just kind of wiggle through each of my lashes because I wanna see if the rumors are true. I'm just putting mascara on this end, on this eye, and you can definitely tell, like, very, very full, very voluminous. And I'm gonna curl them again at the end to give them more of a lift. I feel like the liner kind of makes them look not as full as they do they are um but what i was gonna say is that if you aren't a huge liner person you can definitely cut that step out because i feel like even if i didn't have any eyeshadow on at all these lashes would be a lot more full looking i think it's just the eyeliner that's kind of throwing it off but it still looks really good especially like for just a day-to-day -day thing i always am using my jaclyn hill palette and stuff but i want to show you guys something that you can get too since those were kind of sold out this is the cookie highlighter from benefit i've had this 
this for like almost a year and it's so pretty. It is a golden pearl super silky highlighter. It is beautiful. Um, so we are just gonna put a little bit of that on the upper, what do you call this, cheekbone. Same thing over here. And to make the eye look complete, I'm going to take back and go back in that Central Park shade um, with like a little buffer brush. Let me find one. I'm going to take that and kind of buff out that lower lash line. So I'm going to apply a good amount of product to get it smoky. That was a little too much. And then I'm going to take the other side of this. This is from like a Naked 3 palette um, and just kind of buff that out. I have this other mascara. I know it's the bottom, so you can't really tell. But let's see how this makes our bottom lashes look. Okay, that definitely made the bottom lashes look deeper. And another thing like I used to do, and you can do too, I used to really line the waterline of my bottom lash line with um, black eyeliner. Um, just because it, if you want like a more of a smoky look, but since this is like no false lashes, more day-to-day -day glam, um, we're not gonna do that. Something I've been using a lot lately that so many people have like asked me what it is. It is the Super Stay Ink Crayon from Maybelline in the shade Seek Adventure. It is just this really pretty bright pink. I love it. Um, but today I kind of want to go for more of a nude look. And so I'm going in Max Whirl Lip Liner. Y'all know this is like my favorite ever. And then I kind of just contoured the lips a little bit. Um, and then the lipstick I've been using for like a year now is Creme Brulee from Kylie Cosmetics. I also love Coco K and I know a lot of people say does it say it dries your lips out? Typically, I put it on after or before Vaseline um, just to kind of make it look a little bit more or feel a little bit more soft because it does dry out really bad. I think she has a cream version too, but this is just like a creamy regular lipstick and cream relay and it's almost the same shade. Hey guys, so I wanted to do an end of day check-in. It is currently after 6, so I've had this makeup on for about 8 hours. I will say, after I filmed that video, I had lunch and I wiped the lipstick off and ended up putting that Maybelline Link uh, ink crayon. I think I showed it in this video. Um, but anyway, I ended up putting some of that on, and this is truly how it stayed on my face all day long. Today has been a really busy day. I went to the dentist, and I also took my dog on like a 20-minute walk run outside. I'm super sweaty. I just got back, um, but my face does not show the sweat at all. This looks so awkward, but I'm right in front of my ring light, and you can see um, the lipstick obviously has come off a little bit, but the face makeup itself looks really solid, so I honestly like would 10 out of 10 recommend this foundation um, just from like a first date impression. Um, definitely will be wearing this at Disney World, and I think it's going to be a real winner. Um, it feels really dry if you don't like your face to feel dry and matte. Don't get this, get the regular finish or a dewy foundation. I'm not used to the way this feels. Not crazy about the bronzer I used. Um, it feels like a little choppy, but what are we gonna do? I think it might have to do with the fact that I put that cream bronzer on first and I think that kind of just didn't go with the foundation and everything. Um, but overall, 10 out of 10 recommend the foundation from what I'm seeing. If you want matte, thank you again and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!